All right, this is really bad. Our chain plates are broken. Now we are put at a very large disadvantage. Electric motor. Synthetic rigging. Classic sailboat. No electronics. Crossing the Atlantic Ocean. Going where the fair winds blow, our home is where the waters flow. We'll show you what we've come to know on board while sailing wisdom. Nothing makes you appreciate a place more than getting there like this. <laughs> So we're going to be starting our watch schedule. I'm going to bed first, because I called dibs, and that means Maddie has first watch. It's a pretty sunset. There's clouds and a nice, you know, golden sky. Well, we're in the home stretch. We are very close to Puerto Santo, which is our port in Madeira that we're going to. The issue is we need daylight to come in, because it's a new port. We don't know the area and it's it's just not safe to come into these places in the dark so we need to like plot a course that'll use up miles take time but also be comfortable to get us there at the right time so the course we're on hopefully if we can run it slow enough we'll get there at dawn the bad news is maddie has had a really rough go this whole way yes yeah, so usually maddie's seasick for the first few days and then she's good uh we are now on our eighth day yeah this is our eighth day and she's been seasick for eight days so it's it's been pretty rough on her we're getting there about 70 miles to go hit the patch on backwards like an idiot and then it wasn't working because i'm an idiot and i put it on backwards but then we flipped it and it gave us some time She's finally sleeping, so I think it's kicked in. Poor girl hasn't had good sleep in oof, like eight days. Because she's either been throwing up while she's asleep and not really sleeping, or up on watch, not sleeping, obviously. Throwing up all the time, so it's just been really, really rough on her. So I think this sleep is like super necessary for her. very kind of groggy and slow um, but small price to pay for not throwing up every couple of minutes uh, so we're getting nearer to sunset and I'm just happy knowing this is our last night of this um, and that tomorrow we can at least see Madeira if not go ashore. All right, we made our turn. We are on the approach. 10 hours to go. We can see it. It is right there. Uh, and it looks amazing. I can't wait for the sun to come up higher. And uh, let's see, as soon as we pass this point, it's only about two miles to our uh, anchorage. The experience of coming into a brand new place is my absolute favorite part of cruising. It's so hard to 
explain the magic of arriving upon an, an island uh, or even a town that you've never seen before and knowing that you have so much discovery ahead of you. It's beyond exciting for many reasons to be coming upon Puerto Santo. I have been on the patch for uh, almost 12 hours now and it's been doing wonders for me so that's a good sign for the future um, but I'm still incredibly relieved to see this land and just the drama of this landscape stretching out in front of us just popping out of the ocean that we've been traveling in for nine days it's it's quite the experience so i think the reason that like getting here is so much more special by sail is because like yes yeah, so you can come here by airplane they have an airport here i believe on this island they might not but still you can get here to this island chain by airplane but you are in a city you hop on a plane you're in this aluminum tube rocketing through the sky and then you get here in a few hours like it doesn't have the same feel as literally being out in a completely blank world of just waves for over a week like your mind just gets reset as to what the world is and then when you come here it's like oh land <laughs> dry land <laughs> it's, it's it's so cool What about one of the facts we almost slowly drowning in sand? I wanna be an example how to feel the space between the shadows. And we saw we're in 20 feet of water. We're bossed by the atom. Herbie's dropping the chase. documents and everything we got internet on shore and we were told that we can't get the COVID test until tomorrow morning because an airplane has just arrived there's only one doctor that goes around giving these COVID tests so since the airplane arrived they're gonna be really busy all day which means we have to wait until tomorrow morning but that's all right we're gonna get back to the boat and clean up because there is salt everywhere I am making some celebratory spam and eggs. We just did the COVID test. We're gonna receive our results tomorrow, tomorrow morning, so we have to stay quarantined on the boat until then, which means cleaning and cooking. So it was really great. The marina office uh, called us up, radioed us, and said last minute they were able to fit us into the doctor schedule, which really makes a huge difference because it takes a whole day for them to get the results. Right now we are going to a mechanic to see if he has parts for our chain plates and also a uh, part for our outboard motor. And we're just walking through the town for the first time and it's really beautiful. Also we tested negative for the virus. All right, we saw the mechanic and the good news is he is able to acquire the materials to fix our chain plates. Yeah, so when you're in small islands like this, everyone Everyone has to be able to do everything. So he's not a mechanic that just orders parts and bolts them in. He's a mechanic that machines the parts himself. <laughs> so he's gonna get the metal bars and then mill the holes in them. So this was a very successful journey into town and 
we have a good grasp on things now. So we're gonna go back to the boat and plan our next few days. <laughs> so the deal here is we are anchored outside of the marina and we pay six euros a day to be anchored there, but we get free laundry and use of the showers. Okay, now that we're here and safe, we're going to be getting the chain plates out. So we found the mechanic, he's got a machine shop and he's gonna mill us some new chain plates out of stainless steel. But first I gotta get to him. Now, we're really glad that when we rebuilt the head in the Azores, we made it with the intention of making the chain plates easier to access because the old chain plates, or actually the old head, had it so that you had to completely disassemble the entire head to get to the chain plates. So yeah, that, that was a design. And when we redid the design, we made it so that I literally take out four screws and then the chain plates are there. Thank you. <laughs> Ichi is going for a trip. He needs a tune up. <laughs> so we're taking our uh, dinghy outboard in to get some maintenance. It needs a uh, carburetor cleanup. Yeah, so I, I used to do it before, but I just don't have the tools or the sprays. So we're just going to take it to someone and have it done. <laughs> and then we're going to go do something really cool, and it's a surprise. Yep, Casa Colombo. Columbus is not as well liked as he once was, especially in American society right now, but it is still a really important part of history. And the fact that he spent so much time on this island is really intriguing. So we're gonna go learn all about his time here. The museum had a lot to read. Uh, but it was basically about the history of Madeira and Porto Santo. So Christopher Columbus actually sailed here and married the daughter of the first governor of Porto Santo. So he lived here for quite some time in uh, about 1479, 1480. And then he left in 1492, as we know. So this was his house. I kind of wish that the museum talked a little bit more about the house itself, um, because we really know nothing. Oh well, we know at least that it's from 1479. <laughs> this is a dragon tree. And in 1350, when Porto Santo was first populated, their sole export was dragon's blood which is the sap from the dragon's tree, and they exported it to Japan mainly. So they exported it to such an extent that they almost drove the tree to extinction on the island. So they then began exporting cereals, and they had really high quality cereals, which uh, even was given to the king of Portugal at the time. So, uh, dr but dragon trees can still be found sparsely along the island here. We had some delicious burgers for an early dinner, and now we're gonna go back to the boat and continue tackling this chain, chain plate situation.
So what we're seeing here is 12.7 million years old. Well, we've been living next to a beach for a whole week and we haven't even gone in the water. So today we're gonna rectify that situation. Time to go snorkeling. Today we're sailing. We're going to Madeira. And so we're all ready to go. But we're doing well. The only reason I'm like edgy is because we're in the wind shadow of this island and this island is, you know, trade winds. 